In this video, we're going to rank every single gadget in the game on a tier list. We'll start with Shelly and the Rare Brawlers, and then we'll work all the way up to the Chromatic Brawlers. For Shelly, Clay Pigeons is absolutely the one you want to get. You can just ignore Fast Forward. It looks cool, but it's literally one of the worst dashes in the game, so I think D tier actually works for it. And Clay Pigeons actually works very well with her Shell Shock Star Power because she can actually do a lot of damage from a distance, and so I'm going to put in the A tier. Next, we have Nita, and I actually think both of her gadgets are B tier gadgets. In earlier trophies, Bear Paws is actually pretty solid because people get caught with it pretty frequently, but later on, they avoid it very easily, and so Faux Fur is the better one just overall. Up next, we have Colt, and I like his speed loader, but it's only good in like one game mode, so I'm going to put it in the C tier because it's only really useful in heist. Then you have his Silver Bullet, which can break walls whenever you want to, whichever ones you want to. You don't even need his super, and it can hold multiple targets, so I'm putting it in the A tier. Next, we have Bull. Now, I like his T-Bone Injector. It's incredibly simple. It's always useful, but I do think Stomper is the better gadget for him. It helps him get more kills, and it allows him to prevent himself from going too far when his super because his super has a long range. I'm putting T-Bone Injector in the B tier and then his Stomper in the A tier. Next, we have Brock and Rocket Fuel is absolutely the one you want to use over Rocket Laces. Any gadget that can instantly break walls from a distance, especially on a long range damage dealer like Brock, is very strong. Rocket Laces is actually really good, especially for when enemies do get a little bit too close to Brock, but it's just not as strong as Rocket Fuel. I'm putting Rocket Laces in the A tier and Rocket Fuel in the S tier. I've got more to show you, but first I want to show you all of my awesome mechs from the sponsor of today's video, Mecha. Arena. My favorite part of Mech Arena is all the different mechs with their own unique abilities. You're going to want to click the link in the description below or scan the QR code to download the game on mobile or PC. And if you do so, you'll get a free starter pack with $30 worth of in-game items to give you a head start. If you're quick, you can even add me using my profile ID. Next, we have El Primo. And honestly, neither one of these are actually amazing gadgets. Suplex Supplement can do some interesting like cheesy plays and stuff like that. But it doesn't work like too great. But then you have Asteroid Belt, which is really useful for breaking walls in like Brawl Ball. But like like typically anywhere else, you don't want walls to be destroyed because El Primo relies on them to get close to enemies. I'm going to put both of them in the C tier. I do think Suplex Supplement is the better option unless you're playing Brawl Ball, which is where you're going to want Asteroid Belt. But only use it if you can make sure you can get rid of walls by the enemy goal. Next, we have Barley, and this might surprise you, but I actually think that his Herbal Tonic is the better gadget over Sticky Syrup Mixer. This one's better at saving Barley from scary situations. However, Herbal Tonic, you can use three times every single match, and every single match, you're going to get full use out of it. I'm going to put Sticky Syrup Mixer in the B tier, and then his Herbal Tonic in the A tier. Next is Poco, and I think his Tuning Fork gadget is better, definitely, over Protective Tunes. Surprisingly, Protective Tunes was used somewhat in the most recent Brawl Stars World Championship to counter Crow, but against most Brawlers, it's not very useful, and you want to go with Tuning Fork instead. I'm going to put Protective Tunes in the C tier, and Tuning Fork in the B tier. Next is Rosa, and honestly, both of her gadgets are, like, equally okay. Girl Light's only useful if you can connect it to other bushes that are actually in, like, really useful locations locations, and Unfriendly Bushes is only useful if enemies are actually in bushes. So if I had to pick just one, I would go with Unfriendly Bushes, but I'm actually putting both of them in the B tier. Next, we have Jessie's Spark Plug and Recoil Spring, and I think that Spark Plug is the better option for her. Recoil Spring can be useful in highs, but I'm going to put it in the C tier, whereas Spark Plug, I would actually put in the A tier, except for the fact that you have to have her turret alive in order for her to use it. So I'm just going to put it in the B tier. Next, we have Dynamite, and the, there's a very obvious choice between Fidget Spinner and Satchel Charge. This one is by far the clear winner, like no question questions asked. Satchel Charge could be the strongest gadget in the game. It is incredibly unfair, whereas um, Sat Fidget Spinner is all the way down in the F tier. It's not very good at all. Next, we have Tick, and the choice between these two is very simple. Last Hurrah 100%. He gains a shield. He knocks enemies back. He deals damage with this gadget. It's insane. The value is just crazy. Whereas Mind Mania might do additional damage. Maybe. <laughs> Last Hurrah is an S tier gadget, whereas Mind Mania I'm going to put down in the D tier. Next is 8-Bit, and the one you're going to get is going to depend on which game mode you're playing. If you're playing a high extra credits 100% but everywhere else you're going to want cheat cartridge which is why I think this is generally the better option. I'm going to put extra credits in the C tier and cheat cartridge in the B tier. Next we have Rico and he's kind of like Dynamite. He has one of the worst gadgets in the game and then he has one of the best gadgets in the game. Always go with Bouncy Castle 100% of the time. The healing that this provides it can absolutely just be insane whereas this very rarely deals very much damage at all. I'm putting Bouncy Castle in the S tier and Multi Ball Launcher in the F tier just like Dynamite. In fact I'm going to put them right next to each other just because I can. Next is Daryl, and both of these are okay. Recoiling Rotator is fantastic for charging his super, but if he already has his super, then Tar Barrel is actually really fantastic sometimes. I think the Tar Barrel is better overall, and I'm going to put it in the B tier, whereas I'm putting his Recoiling Rotator in the C tier. Next, we have Penny, and this is a very obvious choice. You're going to go with Salty Barrel every time. You can splash on it to counter tanks. You can use it to block damage from long-range sharpshooters like B or Piper, and it's just easy to get use out of it every single time. 
Now, Trusty Spyglass, I actually almost consider putting in the F tier, but her range is so far that it's like, it can be useful sometimes. So Trusty Spyglass is going in the D tier, and then her Salty Barrel is going in the S tier. Next, we have Carl, and the choice is obvious. Go with Flying Hook every single time. Heat Ejector, the damage can be nice uh, if you hit with it, but uh, the utility you get from Flying Hook is just off the charts. That's why I'm putting Flying Hook in the S tier and Heat Ejector in the C tier. Next is Jackie, and her pneumatic booster gadget is by far the one that you want to use. This rebuild is very interesting and really cool, but it just does not get the value that I thought that it would. It might be a little bit harsh, but I'm putting rebuild in the F tier, whereas her pneumatic booster is actually useful pretty much all the time, and so I feel like B tier is fine for it. Next is Gus, and his soul switcher is interesting, but honestly, the trade-off is like pretty much never worth it. So you want to go with Kooky Popper, especially because it can deal damage almost instantly after it actually hits an enemy. It's really good. That's why I'm putting Kooky Popper in the A tier and Soul Switcher down in the F tier. Next, we have Bo and Tripwire has a really long delay. It's really hard to use successfully, which is why his Super Totem is the obvious choice. Bo's Super Totem actually used to be crazy strong, but it got nerfed a ton. So I'm putting in the B tier, whereas I'm putting Tripwire in the D tier. I almost consider F tier, but I think D tier is more fair. Next, we have M's. Now you have her Acid Spray, which is actually pretty good. It goes through walls, but it deals 20% less damage. And Friend Zoner just completes her kit. It prevents her from her strongest enemies, and that is close range assassins. So that's why you want to go with Friend Zoner. I'm going to put her Friend Zoner in the A tier and her Acid Spray in the C tier. I did consider this in the S tier because it just does such a good job at making M's like almost nearly perfect, but it just doesn't quite provide the same amount of value as all these other S tier ones. So A tier makes sense for it. Next is Stu, and honestly, both of these are actually really great. I think Breakthrough is overall better. If Speed Zone actually didn't have any health decay, then I would consider both of them to be S tier, but because it does, you want to go with Breakthrough. Speed Zone still going in the A tier, but Breakthrough is going into the S tier. Next, we have Piper, and Auto Aimer is actually pretty solid for her, but it only counters tanks, whereas her homemade recipe is just, it's actually um, too strong. It, it really is. Auto Aimer is going in the B tier because it's not used all the time every single match, at least not that you're playing Piper, whereas Homemade Recipe is going in the S tier. Next, we have Pam. Pulse Modulator is not like awful, but you don't get really great value from it very often, whereas Scrap Sucker is actually insane and can help her win pretty much any 1v1. Her Pulse Modulator is going in the C tier and her Scrap Sucker is going in the S tier. It's really good. Next is Frank's and both of his gadgets are actually pretty equally good. Active Noise Cancellation is pretty solid, especially to counter specific brawlers. Irresistible Attraction, it can easily be wasted, but if you do happen to hit somebody, you're practically guaranteed to kill them. If you play Frank in Power League, Active Noise Cancellation could be really helpful, but overall I would go with Irresistible Attraction and I'm honestly putting both of them into the B tier. Next we have BB. Now, her extra sticky is only useful if you have your super and you hit an enemy. That's a lot of conditions, so you don't end up using it three times every single match, whereas Vitamin Booster, you can use three times pretty much every single match. And that's why I recommend going with Vitamin Booster. I'm putting her extra sticky in the C tier. I consider D tier, but her Vitamin Booster, I'm going to put in the A tier. Next we have B, and she doesn't have any amazing gadgets. I think that the better option is Honey Molasses, just because her Rattled Hive is really hard to aim and doesn't actually do that much damage like it used to. I'm going to put her Rattled Hive in the D tier and her Honey Molasses in the B tier. Next is Nani. Her Warp Blast can be really fun. It's really cool, but you get rid of the explosion and then you have to hope that she survives in the time that it takes for her to unload shots when she gets close to an enemy. It, there's some fun things you can do with it. It's not totally awful, but I like her Return to Sender a lot more, especially because you're going to be playing her in Knockout and sometimes this can absolutely slaughter an enemy Brock or a Piper. It's still pretty circumstantial though, so I'm putting Return to Sender in the B tier and her Warp Blast in the C tier. Next we have Edgar and both of his are actually pretty solid. Both B tier, honestly. If I absolutely had to choose one, I would go with Hardcore. I really like Let's Fly because it charges up a super and his super is what makes Edgar actually good, but Let's Fly or Hardcore will actually help him stay alive a lot more often when he's using his super. But both of them are going into the B tier. Next is Griff and uh, Coin Shower. <laughs> it kind of sucks. It's one more row of coins. Like maybe it's useful in hot. No. Don't use it. Even then, you want to go with Piggy Bank. It's not as useful as other gadgets that can actually break walls because it takes a little bit of time and you have to get to the specific spot to place down, but it's still really excellent, which is why I'm putting it in the A tier, almost S tier, and Coin Shower down into the F tier. Fun fact, Coin Shower only does 170 damage more than Piggy Bank does, so it's not even that, like, great. <laughs> Especially if you compare it to Brawlers like 8-Bit, who literally shoots three times as many with his extra credits. <laughs> Next, we have Grom, and honestly, both these are, it's really close, okay? Watchtower is 
really fantastic on maps with lots of bushes, but typically you don't want to play Grom on maps with lots of bushes. Whereas you have Radio Check, which is fantastic if you can actually hit somebody, but it's useless if they dodge all of them, which actually happens pretty frequently. Overall, I'd go with Radio Check, but I'm putting both of them in the B tier. Next we have Bonnie, and this is a very easy choice, okay? Crash Test is very scary for her to do, like 300 damage on hit, that's not very much. Whereas Sugar Rush just gives her such a massive buff and is incredibly useful. Sugar Rush is going all the way up into the A tier, and Crash Test is going in the F tier, mostly because like she's just better off using her regular attack anyway. Mortis's gadgets are really tough to decide between because a Survival Shovel will actually give you one more attack over those four seconds, whereas Combo Spinner is instant and is definitely easier to use. A very high skilled Mortis player will get more value out of Survival Shovel, but most players, including myself, I recommend using Combo Spinner, but they're honestly both B tier gadgets. Next is Terra, and the choice is pretty easy. Support from Beyond is the better option. Psychic Enhancer used to be really fantastic until they added the Vision gear, and it kind of is just like better overall. And even though her shadows from Support from Beyond will get taken care of pretty easy, it's actually a really hard counter to a lot of brawlers that can't do splash damage. Right now, Psychic Enhancer is a C tier gadget, whereas Support from Beyond is an A tier. Next we have Jean, and the choice is very simple. Vengeful Spirits can be useful on really open maps, but most of the time they're not that great. Whereas Lamp Blowout can be used literally all the time. Even if he's not facing close range brawlers, he can pull them towards him and then use it to disrupt them. It's fantastic. Vengeful Spirits is going in the C tier and Lamp Blowout is going in the A tier. Next is Max and Sneaky Sneakers honestly is just a little too gimmicky. Very rarely am I able to use it successfully and it be good. Whereas Phase Shifter is basically like Shelly's dash, except that it gives her immunity with that shield while she's dashing. It's crazy. Sneaky Sneakers, I wish it was cool and good, but it's just not. I don't know. It's F tier. Whereas Phase Shifter is going in the A tier. Next is Mr. P and I think that the choice is obvious with Service Bell. You want to go with this. I do like portal reinforcements because it helps you find enemies, but Service Bell can increase their health, heal them if they're almost dead, and they deal more damage. It's actually really useful. Or at least it's uh, B tier useful, which is better than portal reinforcements going in the C tier. I really like both of Sprout's gadgets quite a bit. Garden Mulcher it restores a lot of HP and actually pairs very well with Photosynthesis Star Power, but Transplant is just downright unfair fair sometimes because he can have it can have three additional supers. I do think transplant is the better option though. It's pretty close though as you can see I'm putting both of them in the B tier. Next is Byron and I like both of his honestly. Booster shot is really cool for a close range combat but usually when he does that he's gonna die or you can just use it to auto aim and attack on enemies and make sure you hit and that's actually really useful but I like shot in the arm a little bit more because he's supposed to be able to always stay at max HP because it helps him stay alive longer so he can heal his teammates but I'm putting both of them in the B tier. Next we have Squeeze. This choice is incredibly obvious. Wind up, very rarely do you actually get use out of it, whereas Residue could be the strongest gadget in the game. You can shut down an entire pathway for 10 whole seconds or kill people to try to walk through it. It's insane. Wind up gives it really long range, which is fun sometimes, but you know, so is putting in the D tier, whereas Residue is going in the S tier. And I, I haven't ordered the S tier, but I'm going to put it up here anyway. Next, we have Gray. Now, I am literally recording this on the day that Grand Piano got its size reduced to 50%. However, However, it still can destroy any wall that he points his finger at, which is actually insanely strong for him. Grand Piano is the one that I would choose. I do like Walking Cane. I like the fact that it can destroy walls, but um, it you have, do have to actually hit an enemy in order for you to do that. And it doesn't pull enemies too close to gray. So I'm sticking with Grand Piano. I'm putting Walking Cane in the B tier and I want to put Grand Piano in the S tier. I know it did get nerfed, so I'm hesitant to, but you take a look at Stu's Breakthrough and Brock's Rocket Fuel and how good both of those are breaking walls, I think that it's still justified. Next, we have Spike. Popping Pincushion is useful on Heist, um, but even then, I would actually rather have Life Plant, which is why this is the one you want to go with. It can heal Spike and other teammates. It blocks projectiles. It's so good. You're going to use it three times every single match, and you're going to wish that you could use it even more, so I'm putting in the A tier, whereas Popping Pincushion is going right down to uh, Rico's Multi-Ball Launcher in the F tier. Next, we have Crow, and I really like his Defense Booster Gadget. It's fantastic in Solo Showdown. However, Slowing Talk is just so good because you can slow as many targets are as poisoned. It used to be the best gadget in the game and it's still an S tier gadget even after it's been nerfed. Whereas defense booster is good in the B tier. Next is Leon and you want to go with lollipop drop every time. Clone projector can be useful. It, it's better at tricking people than I give it credit for, especially in lower trophies, but I'm only going to give it C tier. Whereas lollipop drop can give his whole team invisibility and does deserve S tier in my opinion. Now for Sandy, you absolutely want to go with sweet dreams. 
Sleep Simulator is like interesting, but very rarely is it actually that useful. Whereas Sweet Dreams is useful 17 times a match if you could use it that many times. Even though it only stuns for one second and can be interrupted, it's definitely S tier. And Sleep Simulator, it could be F tier. I'm, I'm gonna put it in the D tier just for those few times when like it really comes in clutch. Next we have Amber and you wanna go with her fire starters every single time. It pairs very well with both of her star powers and she gets a little speed boost, which is always nice. Dancing Flames doesn't deal very much damage. Most enemies will be able to just run away. The only time it's useful is if an enemy is on the other side of a one single wall and it forces them to fall back so that she can then attack them. That's very specific, so I'm giving it F tier, whereas fire starters I'm putting in the A tier. Next is Meg and Jolting Volts is the one you wanna go. Preserving her health as a mecha is incredibly important. Uh, toolbox, it would be better if it didn't actually get destroyed over time. Even then, I don't think that it would be too overpowered. But right now her toolbox is in the D tier, whereas Jolting Volts feels pretty good in the A tier. <laughs> Next we have Chester and both of his are honestly kind of not that great. Spicy Dice, you still don't know which one you're gonna get. You might even get a worse super than the one you currently have. Whereas Candy Beans, you don't know which buff you're gonna get, but you know it's gonna be useful, except not always. And honestly, it's not super clear which one you're getting every single time. You could definitely disagree with me on this one, but I'm actually putting them both in the C tier. And if you had to pick just one, then go with his candy beans. Next, we have Gale and both of his used to be incredibly strong and both got some pretty heavy nerfs. Overall, I would definitely say Twister is the better option for him. It used to be an S tier, but then it got some nerfs. Still, it's sitting pretty high up in the A tier, whereas Spring Ejector is going down in the C tier. Okay, next we have Surge and both of these are very excellent options. Really, they, they're, you, you can't go wrong with either one. I think the general consensus among the pros is that power shield is typically a little bit better. And I, I, th I think that I agree with that, especially because once he upgrades a couple of times, it's really important to keep him alive. Plus reloading that ammo is really useful for him, but both of them are going in the A tier. So whichever you want. Next is Colette. And I think Gotcha is the better option right now. Nah, -uh, can be useful, but you can also just miss it. And sometimes if you're not paying attention, the damage won't be right and it will not actually help you get a kill anyway. Whereas healing for 80% of the damage she does in the next five, five seconds is incredibly useful. Nah -uh is going in the C tier and it's close. I almost put it in the A tier, but Gotcha is going in the S tier. Up next is Lou. Ice block is really good, but the timing has to be absolutely perfect for him to really be useful, especially because he is very vulnerable after the invulnerability wears off. But Cryo Syrup could just be absolutely insanely useful, especially if you have his hypothermia star power. And that's why I'm putting it in the A tier with his ice block in the C tier. Both of Rust's gadgets are both like fine. They're, they're okay. Take cover is completely useless against some enemies, but very good against others. Whereas air support can cover a huge area, but is very easy to dodge. I'm putting air support in the C tier and take cover in the B tier being the overall better choice. Next is Bell, and I think that this choice is actually pretty easy. You want to go with Nest Egg most of the time. Reverse polarity it can be really good. I like that it bounces shots and increases her range like a crazy amount, but it can be really hard to hit and it only lasts for one attack, which is kind of like lackluster. I'm going to put it in the C tier with Nest egg clear up in the A tier. It's actually really good. Next is Buzz and both of these are like pretty good. X-ray shades, obviously the better option on really bushy maps and pairs very well with his eyes sharp star power. But overall, I think the better choice is reserve buoy just because getting an extra throw, it, it honestly can completely counter some brawlers that like can't deal with him getting up close to them. But I'm putting both of them in the B tier. So whatever floats your buoy. Next we have Ash and this is very easy. Rotten banana. The trade-off is just not worth it. Like it's really not. You want to go with chill pill every single time. That additional health can actually be really clutch for Ash sometimes. Chill pill is going into the A tier with raw banana going all the way down. You can't see it. Okay, it's down in the F tier. We got a lot of gadgets here. <laughs> Next, we have Lola. This choice is obvious as well. You wanna go with freeze frame every single time. I know that I might be generous here. I would call it an S tier gadget. Whereas stunt double, it does heal you a thousand HP, but it's not. It's just not as useful as freeze frame is. Shielding half the damage for four seconds is a really significant chunk of damage. Stunt double is going in the B tier. I just lost the F tier again. <laughs> and freeze frame, generous, but I'm going with S tier. Next, we have Fang, and this is a very obvious choice. You wanna go with roundhouse kick. That 0.5 seconds that he stuns enemies is incredibly useful for him. Corn Fu can deal some damage, but it's it's kind of it's kind of corny. It's not useful very often. I'm giving Corn Fu C tier and Roundhouse Kick A tier. It was S tier, but then it got nerfed, so A tier. Next we have Eve. This is a very obvious choice. You gotta go with gotta go. Motherly Love requires her to sacrifice her super to heal teammates, and you might not have teammates that need healing. They might go and heal the wrong teammates. The timing might be off. Your teammates might be dead, or they might kill the hatchlings. There's so many things that can go wrong. Whereas gotta go helps you get out of there when something is going wrong. <laughs> gotta go is 
very close to S tier, but I am going to put it in the A tier. Whereas motherly love is just not good. I'm putting it in the F tier. Janet has two very strong gadgets here. Okay. I think overall, the better option is the drop the base. It prevents a massive area of people from actually being able to heal and it can actually show their location in bushes. It's really useful. The backstage pass is also very useful for escaping different situations. I'm putting backstage pass in the A tier, but I do think drop the base is better and I'm putting it in the S tier. Next, we have Otis. Very easy decision. Dormant Star gets wasted very often. And even if it does hit an enemy, they'll get poisoned a little bit. They'll take a little bit of damage, but like it's not always the optimal time. Whereas Fat Splatter covers a big area, deals a fair amount of damage and stays on the ground for a long period of time. I'm putting Dormant Star down in the D tier, really close to F tier and Fat Splatter up in the A tier. You'll want to use it three times every match. Next, we have Sam and you definitely want to go with Magnetic Field. Pulse Repellent can knock enemies towards Sam, but most of the time it ends up pushing them away. Whereas Magnetic Field is a lot of the times a guaranteed kill as long as Sam can stay alive while he's taking them out. Pulse Repellent's going in the D tier and Magnetic Field is going in the A tier. Next is Buster and this choice is very obvious. You want to go a slow-mo replay. I like Utility Belt. It's pretty good and the healing you can get is pretty insane sometimes if both your teammates are close, but slow-mo replay is just going to kill the enemy. Like two seconds of slow and pulling them toward him where he deals his most damage, that's easily an S tier gadget. Whereas Utility Belt is going in the B tier. Next is Mandy and at the time of recording this, only her first gadget is actually available. So take this with a grain of salt. But Caramelize actually is really solid. Getting that slow is incredibly useful. However, you often will actually miss with her attacks. And Cookie Crumbs just pierces through enemies and the environment, which isn't always useful unless you're on the opposite side of a wall from somebody and you just use it and attack them and kill them. That can be useful. I'm putting Cookie Crumbs in the C tier and Caramelize up in the A tier. And there you have the tier list. So make sure you grab that screenshot. Don't cut my face out. Thank you. Now, I did not order these from worst to best. So Eve's is not necessarily the worst. Squeaks is not necessarily the best, although it really could be. It's really close. And all of this is the opinion of myself and a semi-pro player who helps me write a lot of the scripts for videos like this. Either way, I want to know what your guys' opinions are. So let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe for future content. Check out this video right here. Thanks again to Mech Arena for sponsoring the video. Click the link below to download. And for now, this is Kairos Time ticking by. We will see you in Brawl Stars.